How's it going, everybody? I'm Grant. You're watching the first ever peel and drag extreme fishing fly tie video. Josh and I kind of came up with the idea because we figured since we're going to be showing you all these tips and techniques on how to catch different species, and I'm going to fly fish for most of them, that I would show you what flies I'm using, how I tie them, and what's going on in that pattern just in general. So, spirit of the season, the shad are almost here. We got four or five weeks till they get here in the James, and maybe two weeks after that till they're in pretty much just about every tidal river in the state of Virginia. So it's that time of year. We've already started noticing at Bass Pro where I work that, you know, shad darts, shad flies, spoons, they're all flying right off of the shelves. So I've been sitting in the fly shop cranking out a bunch of shad flies and I get asked 30, 40 times a day, oh, how do you tie that? That's cool. Oh, what, you know, what makes the fly do this? Why do you use this material? So I figured I'd make a video showing how I tie my most, you know, basic shad fly. It's the one I've been using for maybe four or five years. It's highly effective. It's probably caught me over, I mean, hundreds of thousands of fish. It's simple and quick. It's got everything the shad are looking for. It's bright. It's got a little bit of flash. So it's just a really effective fly. So without further ado, materials you're going to need for this fly is a size 6, 2X long, or a size 8, 3X long. Either way would work. The size hook doesn't really matter. Um... Some marabou for the tail. Some woolly bugger chenille. I like to use woolly bugger chenille just because it's got that little bit of flash in there. And this is medium woolly bugger chenille. Um, large bead chain eyes. Let's see. Your body material, which is a mylar tinsel, which is silver and gold. Silver on one side, gold on the other. And also just a thread to match the head just so the thread doesn't show up so much so let's get started get that hook in the vise start your thread I lay down a pretty heavy thread base uh, the thread I'm using is 140 denier you can use 210 if you want it to be even more durable 210 the only problem I've noticed with it though is when you're uh, finishing up the chenille on the head sometimes 210 gets a little bit thick so I just use 140 140 is usually plenty strong um, build up a little thread bump about three or four eye lengths back from the eye that's where we're going to tie in our bead chain eyes like so I time in pretty heavy on one side at coxum and then I just kind of use that thread to pull them back as I turn them. Something like that. Now, don't be afraid to use a good amount of thread to get these guys locked on because you don't want them sliding around or moving on you. Be sure to put a lot of base wraps down just so they're nice and secure. Wrap, all, wrap your thread all the way to the back. What I like to do with my eyes on my flies is I like to... Put a dot of this Sally Hansen's, just I think it's just clear fingernail polish, on the bottom. It really helps with durability, keeps those eyes in place, and you know just makes your fly last a lot longer. You're gonna catch over a hundred fish on this fly, and you want to make sure that it holds up. So grab your marabou. Just one plume will usually do for the tail. Now, I like to make the tail about maybe three quarters the length of the shank. So, a little something like that. Tie in that marabou. Oops. There we go. Something like that. And I like to wrap the marabou all the way up to the eyes because when we're laying down the body material for this fly it's nice to have a smooth body so if you've got that material all the way up makes it a real even body and allows that tinsel something to grab a hold of now just capture all that marabou under your thread just night nice tight touching turns all the way back make sure you get all that fuzz 
under your thread. See, you're left with a fairly smooth body. Um, if you've got a little bit of fuzz that just won't go away, you can trim it away with your scissors. But most of it's going to get wrapped underneath of this mylar anyway. So now you take your mylar tinsel. It's silver on one side, gold on the other. Whatever color you want the body to be, tie that color down. Like tie that color to the shank of the hook. So I want mine to be silver on the outside. So I'm going to tie it with the gold side facing out. So silver is pressed against the body of the hook of the fly. And I usually do wrap this the entire length of the fly. Just once again, a little bit of added durability. Wrap it all the way to your tail, like so. Now, the reason you tie the color you want the body to be down is because when you go to palmer it, it's going to turn and roll on you, and then there you go. Your color is out. Now, before I do this, once again, durability, I like to put a little dot, just a little bead of Sally Hansen's down the shank of the hook. Added a little bit of durability and just in case this uh, tinsel slips out of your fingers when your paw bring it up it will stick to it you know you won't lose the whole wrap that you've done. So I do like to palmer this by hand I know you've probably noticed I'm using a rotary vise but I don't like to use the rotary function for this step just because no matter how hard you try to make this body nice and smooth, it's it's still going to be fairly uneven. So it's hard to get these wraps where you want them with the rotary. And if you let the wraps go wherever the rotary takes them, there's going to be some gaps and stuff like that. Now this is a slow, kind of tedious process, but you'll appreciate it when the fly is finished. See, like that. That's what happens when you drop your when that stuff spins out of your fingers. No big deal. It's happened before. Just palm it all the way back up. This gives the fly just that little extra bit of flash. Not so much that you know it's off-putting to the fish but just enough to where they're gonna come over there and wonder what that is and the baraboo's got enough action in it when it's sitting still or drifting to where it's gonna it's gonna you know make them, make them hit it so capture the tag in under your thread and wrap it back a little bit there we go now snip that tag off Now, take your woolly bugger chenille, cut you a length that's maybe, I don't know, four inches long or so. You don't need much. It's just enough to do a little ball head on this fly. Trick with this stuff, it's really bushy, really thick. So what I like to do is pinch it really tight between my fingernails and strip a little bit of it off. So there you go. You get that nice cord that pops out. That cord is going to be your tie-in point. So, tie it in right behind the eyes so the cord's kind of laying between them. And then just do some X wraps over the eyes and really capture that cord in there. Like that. Then advance your thread all the way to your eye. Now, I like to do about two wraps behind the eyes. Then go through on top. Wrap once under the eye. Do another X wrap on top. Now make sure you really pull this X wrap tight. The good thing about Wooly Bugger Chenille is it's got a little bit thicker cord in it, so you can usually crank down on it pretty hard. You pull really tight so that it cinches down in between the eyes. Swing it underneath. Now you're going to tie it in on the near side of the hook, the side of the hook closest to you. So two or three crossing wraps to capture it then pull everything back
four or five good tight wraps to hold that woolly bugger steel in place. Now, that's the finished product. When you're using a down eye hook, I don't know why people don't do this more. Use the hook to your advantage. The hooks, if you flip it over, the hook is going to hold your whip finishes. And I do like to use a whip finish on this fly instead of a instead of a half hitch. Just I find the whip finish a little bit more durable than a half hitch, especially when you're head spinning it. So that's just my opinion. Now, snip your thread. There is the finished product. Now, only thing left to do is put on the head submit of your choice. I just use the standard Wopsy fly head submit. Nothing too special. Um, it's a really thin cement. I prefer a thin head cement for most of my flies. Because it doesn't really coat the thread. It more or less gets soaked in. It kind of just bonds all those threads together. I like to make sure to at least get that thread wet with head cement on each side make sure I got full coverage and there you go that's my shad fly um, you can tie them in a variety of colors this is one of my favorites chartreuse with the yellow tail um, there's other colors you could tie it in I tie it in purple and pink so red on red Red on red is probably my favorite muddy water color. Shad are a sight fish, so if you go out there in dingy water and you're trying to throw chartreuse, they're not going to see it. You want to throw something that contrasts really well, that red on red just tears them up in the muddy water. It's pink and white. And then probably the fan favorite is chartreuse and white. So, you can tie this fly the same way I did. Or, I mean, if you don't think it's heavy enough, you can go to lead eyes. I use the bead chain eyes just because I'm using a sinking line already. Um, you can go to lead eyes, but if you're using lead eyes, I would scoot them back when you tie them in just because they're a little bit thicker. You want to have enough room around the eye to be able to wrap that chenille. Um, a lot of people actually have tied this fly from you know my standards, showing them how to do it. They throw it on two pound test, four pound test, you know, on spinning gear. If you're going to do that, you've got to tie it with lead eyes, large lead eyes. Um, don't even be afraid to wrap like some thin lead before you tie on your chenille just to have enough weight to be able to throw it. But with that being said, that's my shad fly. If you've got any questions about this video, um, how it was tied, how I tied it, um, just send us a comment or you know, email us at peel and drag extreme fishing at gmail.com. Um, so I guess that's about it. If this video was helpful, if you liked it, share it with your friends and see you on the water. Thanks a lot.